Hello, this is Mr. McGovern and welcome back to the eighth video in the series on rotational motion. Today we are looking at rotational kinetic energy. We're going to be looking at rotational energy, what it is, um, and we're going to describe it using energy bar charts and then we're going to look at the formula for rotational kinetic energy. So last year, and in fact in year 11, and, and perhaps even earlier, you learnt about uh, objects having energy, and one of the types of energy that objects can store is kinetic energy. And the best way to describe that is, is when an object is moving, it has what we call kinetic energy. Now, we're looking at this topic of a different type of movement, and that's rotational, spinning movement. So that also has kinetic energy because the object is moving. It's not moving from place to place, it's moving within the same place, but it still is moving. So we need to separate these two ideas um, out into separate types of kinetic energy. So this year we, we talk about linear kinetic energy, which is the type of energy that you're used to, the type of kinetic energy that you're used to, half mv squared. And we're going to have spinning objects as having rotational kinetic energy. Now objects can have both. An object can be spinning and moving at the same time and have the two types of energy. So I'm going to use an energy bar chart uh, to explain how this works in principle. If you don't know what an energy bar chart is, I'll put a link to a description on a level 2 video on energy bar charts in the uh, description of this video. So, let's say we have a block compressed against a spring as shown in the diagram, in picture A, and it's flung forwards and slides up a small hill. And when it gets to point B, it still has speed, and let's assume that no energy is lost to um, heat. So our energy bar chart for position A, um, the types of energy we could have is spring energy, gravitational and kinetic. And I've chosen to give it five blocks of spring energy. The choice is arbitrary, uh, but I've chosen five here. Then we look at position B, what type of energy does it have? Well, it's up high, higher than position A, so it must have some sort of gravitational energy. So I've given it some gravitational energy. And it's moving, so it must have kinetic energy. Now the important thing here is that I started with five blocks of energy and I end with a total of five blocks of energy here. Only if we use um, equations could we calculate and say how many blocks each one has, like it, it's actually meant to be two and three as opposed to three and two. For these energy bar charts, I don't care how the energy is split as long as the total matches in both graphs and we've got the right types of energy. So we can now write this as an equation. We've got spring energy here, and that got turned into gravitational and kinetic, and that's why we have spring equals gravitational plus kinetic. That is the point of these graphs, is to be able to pull an equation out of it. All right, let's look at a rotational example. So this is the same situation, except here we have a ball started against a compressed spring. It's flung forward and it rolls up a small hill, so it doesn't slide, it rolls. It still has speed at point B. Again, let's assume that no energy is lost to um, heat. So the same thing, the, the spring is compressed, it has five uh, units of energy. Then in position B, well the ball's up high, so I assume it's got some sort of gravitational energy. It's moving, so it has kinetic energy. And I've got a new column over here, rotational energy, so I guess that's if it's rotating as well. So I've said that it's up high, it's in fact, it's the same height as the bricks were. So that's why I've given it the same amount of gravitational energy. I still had to have a total of five energies. So if I've given three here, I can only have one for kinetic movement and one for rotational. So what does this tell you about the ball compared to the, the stack of bricks that was flung out by this, this spring? At point B, the ball doesn't have as much kinetic energy, linear kinetic energy, because it has some rotational kinetic energy. So it's actually not moving as fast. And we can write an equation from that. We have spring energy, which takes turn into gravitational, plus some linear kinetic energy, plus some rotational kinetic energy. And then you go on to do your calculations. So if you get to the point where you're ready to do your calculations, and I still strongly suggest whenever you get a problem and you know you need to use energy to solve it, sketch out energy bar charts. When you get to the point where you've sketched out your energy bar charts, you've used them to come up with an equation, then you can do a calculation with rotational energy. You've got the gravitational energy 
formula from last year. You've got a linear kinetic energy formula from last year, just a half mv squared. This year, the rotational kinetic energy formula is a half i omega squared. So this is very equivalent to a half mv squared. Instead of m, we've got rotational inertia i, and instead of v, we've got rotational uh, velocity omega. So we've looked at how this year with rotating systems, we have to deal with rotational energy as separate from kinetic energy. I'd suggest in all problems with, with energy, you sketch out an energy bar chart first, and then when you go to do your calculations, you've got a new formula for rotational kinetic energy here.